Okay, Marisol, well, for years we have been comparing Tiger Woods to Nicholas and Palmer. Well, this morning we're comparing him to Clinton and Sanford. Here's one editorial cartoon doing uh, just that. As we mentioned at the top of the show, the world's most famous golfer stepped in front of the microphone and said, I'm sorry, about 20 different ways. Here's another little sample. The issue involved here was my repeated irresponsible behavior. I was unfaithful. I had affairs. I cheated. What I did is not acceptable. And I am the only person to blame. Here to break down that apology this morning and compare that one to other famous Mia culpas is Dr. Frank Farley, a psychologist and professor at Temple University. Good to see you, sir. Thanks Good for morning. being with us. Mm -hmm. So your impressions as someone who studies human behavior, what did you think of yesterday with Tiger? Well, I think it's about the best we can expect from him, honestly. Uh, I guess one question is, is he, if he's been living a lie for so long, is he telling us the truth today, you know, yesterday? But, um, you know, he's not, uh, he's not like the other politicians or the comedians and so on, uh, in that uh, the give and take, you know, the informal kind of Q&A, that's not his thing. He micromanaged this thing down to the color of the backdrop and the podium and the lack of reporter. It struck me as a professor, it looked like a lecture to a small select group of people. Right. You know, and he had his notes and it was very structured. Do you uh, believe he was sincere? I have no reason to not believe that he was sincere. But it wasn't that helpful, you know. He kept asking, I need your help. What? What help? Uh, he didn't ask for forgiveness. M most, of the, most of these f people ask for some form of forgiveness. He didn't go there. Right. And he dealt a lot with the business side and with his image among kids and his foundation. Um, and that was it. Right. You know, I think we can't expect any more from, from as, Tiger. As a point... And let's show a little bit of uh, South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford here. Let, refresh your memory with this bite. I hurt her. I hurt you all. I hurt my wife. I hurt my boys. I hurt friends like Tom Davis. I hurt a lot of different folks. Um, and all I can say is that I apologize. Completely different. Completely different. Off the cuff, unscripted, it seemed. He's a politician. They live that way. You know, they've got to be open and be able to take questions and be informal. And uh, he did it. Right, right. And it wasn't bad. And David Letterman, he, he, he chose a different way as well. He, he used humor as well. We don't have to hear him, but people remember that particular, uh, you know, choice there. What, what was different in his approach and how did that help him? What struck me about Letterman was the small amount of time he gave to his spouse on whom he was cheating. It was a very short little statement, and then he went right into he was a victim of a criminal, a blackmail, and so on and so forth. And the interesting thing about him was he got applause for almost all of these lines, you know? And when he said that he'd had sex with staff, he actually said it. None of these other people said, I had sex with, but Letterman did. Um, he, had, he said he had sex with staff, and, and he would keep getting applause for you know, right. all of these lines. And he really turned it around and he made himself a victim of a blackmail. Yeah, and of course, most famous name that leaps to mind when, it, when you talk about scandal and apologizing is President Bill Clinton. But you say we're familiar with him in a way that we're not with Tiger. Of course. Uh, we knew Bill very well. We didn't know Tiger so well. We knew Tiger as a, on the golf course, and that was about it. Yeah. But Bill Clinton, we've, we've, we've lived with Bill Clinton for years and years prior to the Lewinsky scandal. And so there was a lot of kind of, uh, you know, he's got this likability quotient, and everybody, you know, we knew him so well. Right. And, uh, and by the way, the Oval Office and infidelities in the Oval Office have been routinely forgiven by the American people for decades. And if you had to give me a, a time frame, how long before Tiger is back to his old persona within the American public's eyes? Uh, I would say fairly quickly. I think it's up to him, though. I think he's got to get out and play golf, golf, and golf yeah. and get back to where we, we know him. Okay. Dr. Frank Farley, we appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll be right back.